it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast and tonight I want to talk about what is a very exciting topic and that is compound file types and file type auto commands and you might not be excited yet but I think you will be by the end and if you're not then we're just not on the same page but I'll get started by defining what I mean by some of these terms so first of all what is a compound file type so I'm going to do that by showing you a simple file type this is a simple file type because if you look there in the status line, it just says TypeScript. Um, and when Vim encounters a file type like this, it's gonna do a few things. It's gonna to try to apply syntax highlighting that is specific to that file type. And you can see that in this buffer. Um, and any plugins that you might have configured that are supposed to be active for that file type will also do their stuff. So in the context of TypeScript, um, I have some language server integration turned on, uh, which I talked about in a previous screencast. But that means, for example, that uh, it can show me things like syntax errors as I type. So there's a little sigil there in the gutter and some virtual text there on the right showing that I put a syntax error in. Uh, I can also show type information for the thing under the cursor uh, and a number of other things like autocompletion that is specific to TypeScript. So that is in itself pretty useful, right? Uh, but we can make it even more useful by using compound file types. So I'm going to show you a file that has a compound file type. Um, and if you look down on the status line, you'll see it says typescript.jest. So that means that there are effectively two file types applying at once here. So any number of dot separated file types can be applied. Um, and you'll notice that I still have the syntax highlighting that you would expect from uh, the TypeScript file type. And I still have like type information when I hover over a symbol. Um, I can still put syntax errors in and get immediate feedback. All of that's coming from the TypeScript file type. Uh, but additionally, I've got some Jest specific stuff. So Jest is a test runner, which provides this DSL for uh, defining test examples. Um, so I have some Jest specific snippets set up. So if I hit it and then I hit tab, then I can write an, an example using that snippet. Uh, and you'll notice that if I go back to the simple file type that was not just specific and I hit it and tab, that auto completion isn't available to me anymore. The snippet is only active in the files with the Jest file type. So that example that I just gave is a compound file type with two subtypes, but there's no limit to how many you might want to apply. So um, another kind of common example, I think in the JavaScript world would be to have a JSX file type, in which case this buffer might be typescript.jest.jsx, which would mean written in TypeScript, contains JSX syntax, and uh, has tests in it. And these things can just be added like that. So those are compound file types. And I think, hopefully you can see that they're useful. Um, now let's talk about file type auto commands. Um, and so first of all, I'm gonna show you a file type auto command. So, um, they look like this. Basically, you register one by saying, okay, when the file type changes, I want to do something. And specifically, you can target a file type. So just say I want to do this for help files, HTML files, and I don't know, some other file type, like modular 2. I don't even know if that's a file type. Um, so basically, when this runs, I want it to do something. And so I want it to echo a message. Hello. So now I'm going to, oops, now I'm going to open a help, help file. So let's open that. And you'll see that it echoed the message hello. So in other words, the auto command that I registered ran as soon as this buffer became active and the file type was set to help, which you can see over here. Uh, so that's a file type auto command. Now, what happens when you try to run a file type auto command on a file that has a compound file type? Well, it's easy for it to not work. Um, and I'm gonna show you why by looking at my dot files. So let's actually look at the jest ft detect. So this works now, but it didn't used to. And the reason it didn't work is because of a gotcha with the file type auto command running afoul of the compound file type. So you'll see here, the way I've currently got this implemented, I basically say anytime the file type changes, that's what this wildcard means, because it will match any file type. Anytime the file type changes, call this function. And so the way this used to look when it didn't work uh, was, oops, file type JavaScript, TypeScript call s test. Um, and the reason why it looked like that is because I wanted this function to be called whenever either of those file types became active. Um, and if you look down here, down the bottom, this is the meat of the, the intention here, which is 
Whenever the file path looked a certain way, matched a certain pattern, I wanted to add jest to the file type. And, and this effectively shows you how to create a compound file type as well. Uh, basically, no auto command. That basically prevents us from entering into like a recursive loop because the file type just changed and then we change it again. And we don't want to run the detection again. We just want to have this side effect and then abort. Basically, we want to append dot jest to the file type. Um, so that's the intent, but it wasn't working with the compound file type and I'm going to try to explain why. The reason it wasn't working is like when you take something like this, uh, what it's equivalent to is uh, effectively as though you've written it out in these two ways. And so when the file type was something like, you know, javascript.jsx, Vim would try to do a word match against that string and it would fail because Basically, it was expecting the strings to coincide exactly, and they, they weren't. And so whenever I came in here with a compound file type, those file commands wouldn't work. So the, the core of this tip is that if you have any compound file types in your repo, in your .files repo, then you pretty much have to make sure all of your file type audit commands use an asterisk. And then when the file type command is called, you have to do some manual matching inside the function. So uh, basically what this line does, it basically says, if the file type matches either of these words, this regular expression here, this pattern will match JavaScript or TypeScript anywhere where it is surrounded by word boundaries. So for example, it'll match plain JavaScript, it'll match JavaScript.jsx, it'll match JavaScript.arbitrary.crap. Um, and the second part is that you don't want to apply the file type if it was already there for whatever reason, because something else would put it there. So you want to bail out if the file type that you're trying to create here in this, this function is already present. Um, so in this case, we're obviously not going to add .jest if it was already there, so we bail out. It might be that you don't have this as a goal in your um, FT detect plugin, but it's a common goal. So uh, if I do a search here for uh, file type, you'll see a few places in my .files repo where I'm doing this kind of thing, file type star. Everywhere I do it, it's always file type star, uh, like that one there, which we were just looking at. And there's one here. Um, and if you dig through my .files, you can find other examples. So that is, that is the core of the tip. And I hope you agree with me that it is incredibly exciting. At least it's exciting for me because I love learning new things about them. And this was one of those things where in certain very rare circumstances, I was finding that my setup that I've been using for years wasn't working. And I love it when I can squish out a bug, especially a long standing bug. Uh, so that's all I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, subscribe if you'd like to hear more of this kind of stuff in the future. Thanks a lot. See you later.